In the heart of the Australian wilderness, where the earth meets the endless sky, there lies a sanctuary, a place where time moves in harmony with the rhythms of nature. Here on Chimney Creek Farm, our family lives in communion with the land, working tirelessly to restore a 30-foot Southern Cross windmill that stands as a sentinel against the elements. As I stand beneath the vast expanse of the Australian sky, painting the back of the windmill blades, the colours dance in harmony with the breeze. And each stroke carries a piece of our story, a patchwork of memories woven into the fabric of this land. And the sun casts golden rays upon the landscape, illuminating the intricate patterns that adorn the blades, a reflection of the vibrant life that surrounds us. The fairy wrens flit around me, their delicate presence a reminder of the beauty that surrounds us in this off-grid sanctuary. With each brush stroke, I find solace in their company, lost in the rhythm of creation. Their songs blend with the whisper of the wind, creating a symphony of sound that reverberates through the air. Painting, in its essence, is not merely an act of creating art. It's a journey of mindfulness, a passage into the depths of one's soul, where colours speak volumes and strokes convey emotions. As I stand beneath the vast expanse of the Australian sky, brush in hand, I'm transported to a realm where time stands still. Each stroke of paint upon my canvas becomes a meditation a moment of focused attention, a communion with the creative forces that flow through me. The act of painting, like other creative ventures, invites me to surrender to the present moment, to let go of worries and fears, and to immerse myself fully in the tactile sensation of colour meeting windmill blade. With each brushstroke, I found myself drawn deeper into the dance of creation, lost in the rhythm of movement and breath. With gentle hands and a heart full of determination, I embark on a new adventure, a task that is both daunting and exhilarating, cutting Paul's hair for the first time. As the wind whispers through the eucalyptus trees, I gather my courage and set to work. With a pair of scissors in hand, I stand before him, ready to embark on this journey of trust and connection. Holding these scissors in my hands feels unfamiliar, but I am undeterred by the uncertainty that looms before me. With each careful snip, I embark upon uncharted territory, navigating the contours of his hair with a delicate touch. Though I lack the expertise of a trained hairdresser, I am guided by intuition and love, a desire to provide comfort and care to the man I hold dear. As strands of hair fall softly to the ground, a sense of accomplishment washes over me. With each passing moment, I grew more confident in my abilities, finding joy in the simple act of shaping and styling. And together we share laughter and conversation, our bond deepening with each stroke of the scissors. Cutting Paul's hair becomes a tender moment of connection, a simple act of love amidst the rugged landscape out here. Though I'm no expert, the satisfaction of shaping his mane brings a newfound sense of accomplishment. With each snip of the scissors, I cherish the intimacy of the moment, grateful for the bond that binds us together in this wild and untamed place. And so, as the final strands are trimmed and tidied, I step back to admire my handiwork. 
I think I did a pretty good job for my first time. What do you think? And as the day fades into evening, we gather around the table outside, savouring the sweet warmth of honey mead from two wild souls. Conversations flow like a gentle stream nearby, weaving tales of laughter and dreams into the night. But amidst the serenity, a shadow of concern looms over me, a health scare that sends me on a journey of uncertainty. Some routine testing came back abnormal, so I'm having to go to a specialist to get uh, more testing done on me. So after lots of appointments with specialists and surgery, I managed to get on top of my pernicious anemia but I seem to still have symptoms that are very similar. So um, yeah, so this could be related to that. So my pernicious anemia started out as a silent intruder, stealthily robbing my body of its vitality and leaving behind a trail of subtle yet insidious symptoms. At first they were just whispers, a, a fleeting sense of fatigue and vague aching in the limbs as inconspicuous as footprints of the passing kangaroo on the soft red earth. But with each passing day, the whispers grew louder, more insistent, a chorus of discomfort that refused to be ignored. The fatigue became a weight upon my shoulders, dragging down even my most resilient spirit, and the ache in the limbs intensified, a constant reminder of the body's silent struggle against an unseen foe. And as the days stretched into weeks and even years, new symptoms emerged. A pallor that dulled my once vibrant cheeks and the shortness of breath that st stole away my joy of a leisurely stroll. The body's cry for help becomes impossible to ignore. Yet in the waiting room of the specialist, a therapy dog becomes my steadfast companion, offering comfort in the midst of fear. With each gentle nuzzle and wag of the tail, he reminds me that I'm not alone. Hello. Meanwhile, life on Chimney Creek Farm continues its rustic dance, with Truffles the mischievous pup leading the way. Her antics bring laughter to our days and remind us of the simple joys found in the rhythm of rural life. No chooks. And amidst it all, a bouquet of red flowers arrives, a symbol of love on Valentine's Day, reminding us of the precious moments we share. Meanwhile, our friend Daryl has been creating the stirrups for our windmill, or rather fabricating the steel ground supports as he so professionally puts it. So the process typically starts with a design phase where Daryl would have created the specifications for the steel ground supports. So this would include the required dimensions, the load bearing capacity and other structural requirements. The steel components are fabricated from stock steel lengths of angle iron. They have weld preparation on the joints to ensure that the welds have full penetration or fusion. These uh, technical terms are a little bit over my head, but Daryl has assured me that this is what he is doing. So right now he's using a cold cut drop saw to um, cut up these pieces of steel. High quality steel is usually the material of choice for ground supports due to its strength, durability and versatility. So if you're doing something like this, the specific grade and type of steel that you select will depend on factors um, for its intended use, environmental conditions and your budget constraints. And 
And so once the design is finalised and your materials have been selected, the steel is cut to the required sizes and shapes using various cutting techniques. And then after the, cut, the steel is cut, then it might, may undergo some shaping and forming processes to achieve the desired shape that it needs to have. So this can involve techniques such as bending, rolling, punching and forging. So a cold drop saw is a specialised power tool that's used for cutting metal. Many cold saws have a built-in coolant system to lubricate and cool the blade during cutting. So Daryl's using a 5 inch angle grinder here. It looks like he's trying to smooth out the parts of the steel that have been cut. Some holes will also need to be drilled to fix the wind pump structure to it with high tensile bolts. The reinforcing rod is welded to the angle irons to ensure they are firmly held by the concrete which stops them pulling out. So Daryl has said that the steel is tacked together using a MIG welder, then fully welded. Welding is a crucial step in fabricating steel ground supports, as it involves joining the individual steel components together to create the final structure. Skilled welders use techniques such as arc welding, MIG welding, which is metal inert gas welding, or TIG, tungsten, inert gas welding to create strong and durable welds. And so once the individual components are welded together, they're all assembled according to the design specifications. And then that might, might involve fitting together various pieces, um, adding connectors and things like that to create the final grand support structure. And depending on your application and environmental conditions, the fabricated steel ground supports may undergo surface treatment processes to improve their corrosion resistance, durability and aesthetic appearance. So Daryl took the steel components down to a galvanising plant to get hot dipped galvanised to ensure they don't rust and will last a really long time. So we're very grateful for all the work Daryl has done for us. A blue banded bee dances among the purple rosemary flowers, a gentle reminder of the interconnectedness of all things. From the smallest insect to the tallest tree, every living creature plays a part in this delicate balance of life. So in this timeless landscape, our journey unfolds. Each moment a brushstroke on the canvas of life, painting a picture of resilience, love and the enduring spirit of the land. And we are reminded that strength lies within us all, ready to face whatever challenges may come our way. For in the heart of Chimney Creek Farm, amidst the rugged beauty of the Australian wilderness, we have found our home, a place where dreams take flight and the spirit of adventure knows no bounds. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to, to stay in touch and keep on our journey with us. Stay wild, stay curious and keep exploring.